farmers since day one have been talking about the weather because their whole life revolves around the weather. It's hard to even plan what you're going to do three, four days out. And now it might be bringing in a little bit of fear. I think a lot of people have recognized we are having a lot, a lot of climate change. So far, it don't seem like it's affected the huge farmers. Really care, I don't think. They just, they just want more land and more bushels. You know, so soil is is really a, a bunch more precious than oil. Not many people stop to think about that, but we we really um, till the soil of our own graves and. We just have to start paying way more attention to the soil that we've got left. My name is Kelly O'Neill. We've been on this farm for about a quarter of a century, and uh, uh, we gave lip service to uh, building a house here for uh, about the first two decades of that quarter century. And uh, after the flood of 2007, uh, uh, my my wife. Uh, uh, said enough was enough and we uh, built this house uh, four or five years ago. Uh, 07 uh, was a, a pretty good eye-opener of uh, what extreme precipitation can amount to, what the effects that it can have. All of the erosion that we encountered here and it was there was a significant amount, but it all began upstream from us on arable, tillable ground. Last year we had a lot of rain in September, especially here in our area. The ground was just saturated and each rainfall then uh, caused a lot of flooding, which showed more erosion in our fields and our farmland where we did not have the extra cover crops. We could see the difference easily in what was on the land as to what washed away. Yeah, it's definitely got more extreme. Uh, you know, I remember the old days of a two inch rain was like a two day rain. Now it's a two inch rain and a two hour event. And that's a lot different. You, you lose a lot of water that we used to get into the ground. Extreme weather events and, and their increased frequency can pose huge uh, obstacles, but soil that is that is looked after and uh, has sufficient organic matter to absorb a lot of that and sufficient physical residue on on top of it can withstand some pretty significant insults in the weather department I think in this corner of the county or I think is probably one of the worst areas I've seen around it seems like all of our hills are turning into big fields and all of, there's no contours anymore. It's straight up and down the hill with tillage. Essentially, uh, tillage is, is not a, a neutral act. It, it destroys uh, soil biology. Even any no-till does disturb soil to some extent. So in an attempt to build soil, you, you have to get to at least no till, if not zero tillage. An example of zero tillage would be prairie, in which context the soil is not diminishing, it is increasing over time. And that's what we're trying to emulate with so-called permanent forage that is never tilled. I think our general philosophy is to work with nature. So um, 
and always to be building soil so, so that we are more resilient, to always have more organic matter, cover cropping and trying to keep the soil in place. Hopefully those things will in turn help us to weather the weather climate change things that come up. So cover crops are an attempt to maintain some photosynthesizing root mass in that soil, the intent of which would be to prevent soil from moving by wind and water and to attempt to restore some soil biology and sequester some more carbon. We need to help make the soil strong to, to, for our crops to be strong. There's only so much you can do with man-made stuff until you know you get to a point where you're just spending too much money to, to help put out a good crop. And the healthier your soil, the healthier your plant. And I've always felt that it's kind of like taking my no-till strip-till practices, that's worth one. My cover crops, that's worth one. And then my livestock grazing, that's worth one. Well, one plus one plus one should equal three, but it actually equals five because everything is kind of magnified and gets stronger when it's together. You know, two people by themselves really can't do anything, but together you can do a lot. So uh, that, that makes all the difference in the world. There is reason for hope out there. Just people have to, people just have to pay more attention. People in, in general, producers and, and consumers. To be adaptable, it can be a little bit frustrating. I know when I was younger, I always asked my dad, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Why can't we just do it the same way everyone else is doing? And that was because they're just used to doing it that way. I read a lot of articles on it. Plus I've been kind of following along with your land stewardship meetings too. Every, every meeting you go to, if you pick up one thing, it's probably worth going to, and you do. If people would just keep going to all these meetings and pick up one teeny little thing at every meeting, from somebody. There's a lot to learn off it. I think LSP's work with soil health is uh, has resulted in more of this country being green in uh, uh, October and November, December. It works. It really does.